Welcome to this edition of Call Your Focus. On today's show, we'll take a look at the Board of County Commissioners meeting. Waste management's trash hauling contract with the county is renewed. And a nearly 60-year-old bridge over Chokoloski Bay is set to be replaced. I'm Troy Miller. We'll cover these stories and more next on Call Your Focus. Stay tuned. Whether reporting on the latest news stories or hot issues, taking a look at county government services or announcing what's happening around the county, this is Call Your Focus, bringing government home. At the recent Board of County Commissioners meeting, trash talking, which is not normally on the agenda, was for this meeting as they made an exception to talk about trash collection. The board had the option on activating a renewal clause or take bids for a new contract. The current franchise agreements are with waste management for the majority of the county and choice environmental services for the Immokalee area. Both contracts call for the collection of twice a week solid waste removal and once per week pickup of recyclables and yard waste. The agreements were adopted in 2005 and expire in 2013. The contracts include two seven-year renewal options. After a thorough discussion and presentation by the Productivity Committee, the board approved the renewal of both agreements. Solid Waste Director Dan Rodriguez explains how this contract is a good deal for taxpayers. The uh, Collier County Collections contract is a uh, very comprehensive solid waste collection uh, and disposal um, contract. It serves uh, the greater Collier County, um, including Marco Island and Everglades City. It provides for a high level of service, which includes um, on-demand pickup of large items, appliances. Um, it also has provides single stream recycling. Um, and it's a best value contract. Um, our benchmark showed time and time again that our cost for collection in Collier County are the lowest in the state for the level of service that we provide. It's one of the reasons that we have one of the cleanest uh, communities uh, in the state of Florida, if not nationally. Rodriguez went on to say that recycling drives down the cost of the contract by diverting waste from the landfill. The board took the first step in replacing a troubled bridge over calm waters. The bridge on County Road 29 that crosses Chokoloski Bay has been around since 1955 and has been deemed functionally obsolete. The Florida Department of Transportation bridge inspection report for this year showed the bridge is still not meeting the minimum standards for health and safety. So the board took action by agreeing to enter into negotiations with Thailand International for design services to replace the bridge. The bridge is, uh, was built in 1955. It's a very old bridge. Uh, we did repair uh, in 2009 to the bridge to make it uh, to make sure after the storms that we had and the hurricanes that we had in 2005 and uh, the tropical storm Faye, uh, we made the necessary repairs to make it safe. And now, because it is old, it keeps coming back on the inspection reports of the Florida Department of Transportation as in need of replacement and, and that's what we uh, intend to do. Once the design has been submitted and approved, the project will go out for bid. On consent agenda, the board approved a recommendation to approve a $982,000 contract for intersection improvements at Lake Trafford Road and State Road 29. However, $750,000 will be reimbursed by the Florida Department of Transportation. Commissioner Jim Coletta says this project has been needed for quite a while. The community of Immokalee has been asking for a long time for the county to step forward and get assistance from the state to be able to improve the intersection at Lake Trafford Road in 29. And now the county has come across big time. We have over $800,000 that we're going to be able to apply to that intersection to put in those much needed right hand and left hand turn lanes. So traffic should flow smoother, it should be a safer situation, and I'm sure the lives of the people in Immokalee that travel that route will be greatly improved. The improvements include northbound and southbound right turn lanes on State Road 29 and eastbound right turn and left turn lanes on Lake Trafford Road. Tiger Tail Beach will soon be getting a facelift. On the consent agenda, the board approved a $778,000 contract 
to make some improvements to the dune walkover and the boardwalk. Part of that project will include replacing five existing boardwalks that have depreciated over the period of years. So this whole project that was recently approved by the board will replace the five existing boardwalks and build a new dune walkover, which, which will probably extend about 300 lineal feet getting patrons over the dunes, again, closer to the beach. Construction will begin shortly and is scheduled to take six months to complete. Florida Specialties of Immokalee was honored as the Business of the Month for May. Chief Financial Officer Ron Bailey Jr. <laughs> accepted the honor and made a brief presentation about the agriculture company that specializes in green beans. We here at Call Your Focus want to congratulate Florida Specialties of Immokalee on being the business of the month for May. Stay tuned at the end of Call Your Focus and we will show you the informational video about Florida Specialties of Immokalee that was presented to the board. Well, it's time for a break. When we come back, a new state-of-the-art gas to energy facility is up and running at the Collier County Landfill. And the Emergency Management Department prepares for the start of hurricane season. All of that and more when Call Your Focus continues. Welcome back to Call Your Focus. Collier County is now home to a brand new power plant. The state-of-the-art and environmentally friendly gas to energy facility is located at the county landfill and is a public-private venture with Waste Management Incorporated. Solid Waste Director Dan Rodriguez explains how this project makes both dollars and cents. About 10 years ago, the uh, Board of County Commissioners uh, directed staff to um, maximize existing resources. One of those resources is the methane that's produced in our Collier County landfill. And as part of that, we put together a capital improvement project to work with a private contractor to uh, build a gas to energy facility. And um, that's what we have here in Collier County now. We, it's up and running. It's been up and running for two weeks. It's generating about 3.1, 3.4 megawatts of electricity. And uh, it's a great benefit to the community. It generates enough electricity to power uh, just under 3,000 homes. Um, at its fullest capacity, we'll be able to generate enough electricity to power 35 to 4,000 homes. As part of the uh, construction of the uh, landfill cells, um, they're designed with uh, gas extraction wells that actually pull the gas out. Um, and that gas is then put through a process where it's uh, cleaned up slightly and then put into a compressor where it's put under pressure to put into the generators. Uh, there's five cat generators here on site. Uh, that produce the electricity. This is one of the largest uh, public-private uh, contractor partnerships. Um, waste management invested 8.8 .8 million dollars and basically the county retains the right to the gas. We sell the gas to waste management, they generate electricity and then they in turn sell that electricity to FPNL, which goes onto the grid. The landfill produces enough methane gas daily to fill the equivalent of 11 blimps. The county expects to earn about $460,000 per year from waste management sale of gas to Florida power and light. On May 25th and 26th, Hurricane Reddish blew through Collier County and almost no one noticed. That's because the hurricane was not real, but an exercise designed to make sure that Collier County is ready to respond when an actual hurricane threatens or impacts Collier County. All county departments, as well as representatives from the City of Marco, the City of Naples, the Sheriff's Office, the Red Cross, and countless others were on hand for the training. Emergency Management Coordinator Rick Civiloxi talks about the importance of these exercises. Well, it gives us a chance to uh, first reorient ourselves to processes, procedures, equipment that we have in the Emergency Operations Center, as well as it puts us back into the frame of mind of working as a team because uh, um, a whole lot of the events that might happen could cause us needing resources and a lot of folks don't usually think about, you know, turning to their neighbor that they have the resources, you know, and yet things are there and we can get things done a whole lot quicker than to order them from across the state, you know, uh, if that's what the folks think we have to do. So, again, it gives us a chance to coordinate, communicate, collaborate. Hurricane season started June 1st and runs through the end of November. Now, let's take a look at some upcoming Collier County government meetings. The following meetings are all held in the board meeting room on the third floor of the main administration building, 3299 Tamiami Trail East at the Collier County Government Center, unless otherwise indicated. The Collier County Planning Commission will meet on Thursday, June 2nd at 9 a.m. 
On Friday, June 3rd at 9 a.m., the Code Enforcement Office of the Special Magistrate will be in session. The Metropolitan Planning Organization will meet on Friday, June 10th at 9 a.m. And on Tuesday, June 14th at 9 a.m., the Board of County Commissioners will meet in regular session. For more information on Collier County Government, or to inquire about other meetings that have been scheduled since the taping of this program, contact the Communication and Customer Relations Department at 252-8848 or via email troymiller at colliergov.net. You can also click on our website at colliergov.net for more information. Well, that's all the time we have on this edition of Collier Focus. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.